I'm going to talk a bit about the role that local government can play in supporting the growth of the premium food sector, and in particular uh, the City of Albany, uh, in terms of what we do. So today I'm going to speak first. Uh, I'm the Executive Director of Development Services at the City of Albany, and then, and then following my uh, section, Matt Hammond is going to speak as the Manager of Business Development and Tourism and, and how we can support premium foods in that area as well. As far as um, my directorate being Development Services, we believe that we're uh, supportive of industry. We have a can-do attitude um, and we're supportive of the community and specifically of economic development in our region. And within our statutory um, obligations, we'll always try and make uh, good ideas happen and facilitate options and create opportunities within that area. The Development Services Directorate specifically includes, um, in, in Albany includes the Planning, Health, Building, Development, Engineering, Land Administration and GIS ranges and emergency management and development information services. So you can see it's all pretty, uh, pretty dry stuff there, quite regulatory and, uh, and a statutory role in the city of Albany. So in particular, in, to, in, in regards to providing premium um, food services and value adding, uh, planning, health and development information services probably uh, can assist producers best. Specifically, the, the development information services, we, uh, that's the team that sits at the, at the front there, our customer service part of development services, and, uh, and they're essentially, essentially a jack of all trades. So uh, they're a jack of all trades. They, they provide one point of contact to, to give general advice about uh, any development matters and to support the approval process. The overall message that I want to give about, about anyone wanting to do any um, value adding of food is speak to us early. And, um, and hopefully we can find options around ways that, that we can make things happen for you on your, uh, for your uh, value adding to your product. The next area is health. So with the, with the health guys, although sometimes they can be seen to be a bit of a barrier, their, their role is really regulatory and it's to protect producers and to protect the community, particularly in regards to uh, serving of food and um, developing of fruit, food. So, so they, can, they can though support and provide advice with food safety plans and value adding of products. And, and we're more than happy to help anyone that needs any assistance in that, in that um, area. As far as land goes, which is, which is probably uh, where planning sits in all this, uh, the local government often has two hats. So we have, we have a, um, a planning role for, for private land and, and in fact all land. Uh, and for reserves and other land that we may own in terms of freehold land, we, we also perform the role of a landowner or manager. As far as planning goes as a city, as land use planner, we have over the past few years developed several, several policies and there have been several things that have happened that have certainly protected the agricultural land and limited uh, residential subdivision of agricultural land near, near to the city. So that, so where, where land near to the city is, that's presumably the area where you could best value add to your product as well. So we've had this agricultural protection and subdivision policy since around 2015. And also since around that time, we've had a moratorium on scheme amendments affecting agricultural land. So that, that means that essentially agricultural land hasn't been able to be taken up by uh, residential development. Uh, similarly, we, we've acknowledged that, that uh, land use conflict exists with uh, residential land that is developed next to or adjacent to uh, agricultural land. And so we, we also have prepared uh, information sheets that talk about moving to a rural area and what people should expect, that, that they realise that land next to them may be being used for food production and for value adding to food production. So that's what we call statutory planning. As far as strategic planning goes, we have a, we have a, a planning strategy that, that is about to be advertised. Uh, that will be advertised from the 23rd of July to the 26th of October. Uh, and that will guide land use in the city of Albany for, for the next, uh, until around 2030. So it's a, it's a guideline for that. Uh, two particular things that, that it does in relation to, to facilitation of premium food is that it will continue to, or recommend to continue to constrain urban development. And it will also support land use, support establishment and growth of land that can be used for value adding to agriculture and aquaculture. So we also have had in recent years, we've had, we've had uh, within our scheme, which is our, which is our planning bible, we've encouraged value adding, including allowing restaurants, small bars, reception centres and rural pursuits 
on, on those lands. And we've also had reduced fees for applications related to food processing on agricultural land. We obviously acknowledge that value adding to that product is critical and we've had over the recent years many ideas for innovation parks or clustering but, but in our view it probably needs to be industry driven a little bit. Uh, but we see that we could be a facilitator of that with, with supply of, of land. One particular thing that we've had a look at is, the, is out at Mercer Road, where we've drawn a plan on some um, city-owned land next to the small business centre, which, which obviously also provides a, a commercial kitchen. And we've split up these into a whole bunch of different lots that, that may be of appropriate sizes for producers to, to, to take up. Uh, and, and that's just that's the thought about something that could that could happen in time. But again, it needs to be driven by the industry. So from here, we'd like to know from you, I guess, if if there are uses that aren't being catered for at, at the within our development guidelines, and we'd like to know within our sphere of influence what how we can make things easier and better for you, and what we can advocate for that is outside our sphere of influence. So we'd welcome any of that, that feedback. Some of the opportunities that we see around premium food development is the, uh, the, ag the Ag Society buildings, which have obviously just been constructed. We would see that there, that there is some sort of, uh, there, there's a massive open area that's uh, a massive covered area the, the buildings that certainly are available now in the, in the region. We consider that we may be able to assist with cooperative rate relationships between niche farmers and potential producers, so we might be able to link those lifestylers to the, those preservers. And we also see that perhaps we can advocate for educational institutes uh, to facilitate food production innovation uh, in light of the Intelligent Community Forum, which is something that, that I know Council has been quite keen on, on implementing. So from there, uh, if anyone has any good ideas that they'd like to um, contact me on, please feel free to, to send me an email and, uh, and we can talk more. From there, I'll hand over to Matt. So I'm just going to talk very briefly about some of the work we've been doing to actually promote some of these value-added products to the visitor market. So as you'll see here on the screen, um, over the past probably two years, the Lower Great Southern Economic Alliance, which is a collaboration between the City of Albany Shire of Plantagenet and Shire of Denmark um, have established a new regional brand and that essentially is a geographically stretches from about Walpole through to Bremer Bay down in Albany up to just past Mount Barker. All of this work is part of a tourism development strategy that the Alliance commissioned and the intent of um, elevating ourselves from just promoting Albany or Denmark in isolation is, is working together to promote the region because visitors don't care about local government boundaries. So we, we have taken the step to promote the entire region as a whole. As I mentioned, it's all part of a tourism development strategy. And one of the sort of the key priorities out of that strategy was optimising demand. There, there are five areas that we've, we've chosen to focus on, sustainable leadership, enhanced visitor servicing, optimising demand, enriched experiences and destination development. But optimising demand was one of the things we wanted to get onto very quickly. Um, and as part of that, uh, Alliance Partners and also Tourism Western Australia invested in a consumer marketing campaign, which was launched into the Perth market early this year. Um, and I'm just going to show you some of the things we did. And there was a focus on food and beverage and the value-added products we have in the region. Amazing is to cause great surprise or wonder. But when you're bounded by raw, untamed beauty, world-class food and wine, and ancient giants just swaying in the breeze, when you can pay tribute to the Anzacs and become immersed in untouched waters, that's when amazing takes on a whole new meaning. Search theamazingsouthcoast.com and add amazing to your adventure. And whilst that TVC was in market, we also um, put a lot of imagery uh, up on billboards and bus shelters, on websites, social media. Um, we worked with the West Australian and Yahoo and did uh, quite a few digital campaigns as well. We also ran a TV feature on Channel 9, which was uh, a 30 minute TV show specifically focused on the amazing South Coast. It wasn't part of any other travel show was actually called The Amazing South Coast. 
Coming soon, experience one of the world's most spectacular and amazing destinations. Doesn't get much better than this. Explore incredible natural wonders filled with breathtaking beauty. How good is this? A premiere special with historic discoveries, majestic adventures, and delicious inspiration. This is simply amazing. WA's Amazing South Coast, soon on Channel 9. We run that during the cricket on Australia Day and a few other times throughout the campaign and uh, we, we achieved a reach of over 300,000 people in, in the Perth market, so we're pretty happy with that. Um, so that's, that consumer campaign has finished now and now we're looking to the next financial year to deliver even more market activity in Perth and that is continuing to be supported by Tourism Western Australia. They've committed $250,000 a year for four years. So um, a total investment of a million dollars from Tourism Western Australia, which is really great for our region. The other, the other thing we're, we're focusing on as far as food and beverage goes is at the visitor servicing level when visitors get here. Um, so some of you will be familiar with our brand new visitor centre on York Street, and we're all very proud of it. One of the things we're focusing on as part of our retail offering is local food and beverage products. And you'll see here there's a number of items that we're retailing in the visitor centre at the moment. Uh, and the, the criteria is that it must be regional and it, or, or it must be from Albany, one of those two things. Um, and we're working with um, established producers and also new producers to look at their packaging and how, how we can make the product desirable to sell to visitors when they're here particularly cruise visitors when, when they drop by. So there's just a few things here. I mean, we've got some asparagus, um, olives, vino food, uh, Mount Barker olive oil. There's the ducker that we talked about before. Calgan capers. That's just a few little things we're doing in the tourism space. So we're, we're promoting the region and the food and beverage we have available to the Perth market, because that's where we think our visitors are coming from. And we're also... Um, talking to them again when they get here in the destination and profiling the products we have available in our region. So I'll leave it there.